Hello, everybody. My name is Stacy Carter II, and I'm joined by Tommy Rudy. And we're going to talk about the NBA awards. We got our top candidates for all the major award categories, and we're just going to go through them one by one, starting with MVP. Tommy, who's your front runner for NBA MVP? I need you to know something, Stacy. Okay. Joel Embiid is the best basketball player on planet Earth, uh, and I'm go. not going to listen to everybody who hates on him because I will say that everybody has a little bit of bias, and my bias goes fully towards Joel Embiid. Um, before he got hurt last season, had the meniscus injury, he was averaging 35 points a game. That's the most ever by a center, not named Will Chamberlain in the 1960s, playing against guys wearing belts. Um, Joel Embiid, when he was playing in the playoffs this year against the Knicks, which didn't unfortunately go his way, he was averaging 33 and 10 on one leg, and he had Bell's palsy. So if he can come back healthy, stay healthy, that's the major thing with Embiid. Best ability is availability with Embiid. If he can play healthy all year, I really think that it's going to be him for MVP this year. And especially with the addition of Paul George, taking some pressure off him, and the rise of Maxi last year, I feel like Embiid's going to have a great season. All right, nice. I got a name for you. Okay. Anthony Edwards. Yep. Minnesota Timberwolves. They just traded away Carl Anthony Towns to the New York Knicks. Now, Anthony Edwards is the undisputed number one option on his team. I'm going to be looking for him to average in the 30s this year and keep the Minnesota Timberwolves towards the top of the Western Conference, get them to the Western Conference Finals. I still think even without Carl Anthony Towns, they still have the team to do that. And versus Joel Embiid, I think he's the more positively marketable name between the two. I think it's Anthony Edwards' time in his league, and he's going to – Prove that this season. Yeah, I agree. I mean, Ant is one of the most marketable players uh, in recent memory. It's just his personality really comes out mm -hmm. on the basketball court, and it's hard not to root for him. Um, his usage is also going to go way up this year with them not having Cat anymore. So I like that pick too. All right, all right. Let's talk defensive player of the year. Who you got for defensive player of the year? Well, I feel like this one is kind of the you know chalk pick, but I'm going with Wemby. I think that uh, just the rise that he had over this past summer playing in Paris, like he looked amazing in Paris. Led the NBA in blocks last season as a rookie. That's never been, or that's done, been done one time before, and it was Manute Bull, rest in peace, in 1985. He was second in defensive player of the year voting behind Gobert. He was first team all defense, which no rookie has ever done before. And only five have ever been on the second team, and they're some of the best centers of all times, Tim Duncan, Kareem, Hakeem, David Robinson, and Manute Bull. Um, so I think it's gonna be Wemby, and he, has an eight-foot wingspan, nine-foot wingspan, could yeah. average five blocks a game this year. Mm. So I think it's going to be him. Mm. As long as it ain't go bare this time, I, I'm good with anybody. <laughs> no, no, no more. All, <laughs> all jokes aside, I'm going with Chet Holmgren yep. uh, with the Oklahoma City Thunder. He was top of fourth last year in blocks with 2.3 points uh, blocks per game. Averaged near eight rebounds a game. Uh, I think he has the same defensive skill sets as Wimby Young. Yeah. But uh, offensively, of course, I'm going to give it to Wimby. But I think Chad Hogan can make a difference defensively for the Oklahoma City Thunder and have him number one again. If he does that, I would like him to up his rebound numbers, get in that double digits. If he does that, then I think he can give Wimby a run for this money. Yeah, I agree. I think that Chet, even though I don't personally love him, um, just kind of seems like a little bit of a punchable face. <laughs> don't have much to <laughs> rationalize that. But um, – <laughs> I think that their team is very good, and he's a major part of that. So you got to give him his credit. Oh, yeah, definitely got to give him his credit. Now, let's go ahead and go to most improved player of the year. Yep. Who, do you, who do you have for that? This one's tough because you're never sure who's going to take that major leap. Um, I'm going to go with Evan Mobley of the Cleveland mm -hmm. Cavaliers. He got a huge extension this year, five years, 20, $224 million with the Cavs. The Cavs went all in with that core. Um, and then this past playoff run against Boston, he really upped his game from the regular season. 21 and nine after averaging 16 and nine in the regular season. Um, so I think that he's going to continue to take that climb. And I think the Cavs could be, you know, good team this year, so. All right. I got a name for you from your hometown. Okay. He definitely needs to improve after what happened last year. Jordan yeah. Poole. Yeah. Jordan Poole last year averaged 17 points per game. Yeah. That was three down from the previous season. His efficiency was down too. He only had, he only had 41% from the field. Uh, he needs to work on his efficiency of his points per game, getting into 2025. Um, he can't play like a six man no more. He's a starter now. So he has to up his level with the Washington Wizards. If they want to do something next year, 
I agree. I mean, he, he's got to play like a starter. He's been playing like six man, and they gave him a, a huge contract mm -hmm. and great swag, though. But really quick before we get out of here, rookie of the year, who do you got? I got Donovan Klingon with the Portland Trail Blazers. I think that if they trade away DeAndre Aiden, which has been rumored so, he'll have that greatest opportunity of all the rookies to showcase his skills. I'm going to go Zach Eady, 22 year old rookie, who's played all four years at Purdue was the national player of the year twice in college, and he averaged 25, 12, and two blocks a game in college. So I think this rookie class is kind of weak, mm -hmm. so I feel like he could be the rookie of the year this year. All right, all right. Well, we'll see who's going to win what award this year. Now let's pass it to Andrew and Jack for NHL coverage.